Hello, my name is Leah Pope Parker. I'm an assistant professor of English at the University of Southern Mississippi, and I'm here to introduce you to The Digital Grave, an online edition of the late Old English slash early Middle English poem, The Grave. This is a 25 line poem copied into an open space in a 12th century English manuscript. The grave functions as a memento mori, a reminder that you will die, and describes the process by which its second person audience, you, will be buried and gradually decay. So it illustrates the common motif in medieval Christian literature and art of thinking about death in terms of the physically decaying body. It also demonstrates transitional features of the English language, retaining features of Old English while also witnessing developments toward Middle English. The poem is penned in two hands, possibly reflecting multiple stages of composition or multiple stages of copying the existing poem into a particular manuscript. This poem survives in just one manuscript, which was made in Worcester, England or nearby, and is now at the University of Oxford Bodleian Library as Manuscript Bodley 343, which you can see here. The great benefit of the digital grave is that you can access the poem through this image of the manuscript page without glosses or with glosses, from which you can easily click through to linked annotations, a glossary, and other parts of the edition apparatus. So let me give you a bit of a tour. The Digital Grave is housed in Digital Mappa, a platform developed by Martin Foys at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. The Digital Grave in particular is hosted by the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies. When you open the digital edition, it will look like this. The sidebar is automatically open, but you can hide and reveal it by clicking these three horizontal bars. If you're unfamiliar with Digital Mappa, I recommend making sure you start by reading how to use this edition under Introduction. When you click on a text, it'll open, like I just did. You can also open more than one text at once. If you have multiple windows open within the edition, you can also change their configuration so that you have different ways of viewing texts side by side or in larger or smaller windows. As you can see, this edition includes an introduction to the poem and also to the manuscript, as well as a bibliography for further reading. By the way, Digital Mappa is screen reader compatible, but it is a visual image based edition. And so for the sake of better accessibility, there is a text approximation of the apparatus available under how to use this edition. You can close out of these tiles here and let's look at the actual manuscript page. From the image of the manuscript itself, you can, as I showed you previously, toggle the annotations on and off. With the annotations on, different colored lines give different kinds of information. The orange and pink brackets link to notes on the two scribes. There's scribe two. Purple boxes link to information about the different erasures. Blue circles link to information about scribal notations and abbreviations. And these green underlines give the full poetic line linked in the semi-diplomatic transcription, edition, and translation. Yellow underlining give quite a bit more. If you hover over these underlines, you'll get a transcription of the word itself, suggested translations, the headword from which it is derived, typically in Old English, the part of speech, and then details such as gender, case, and number for nouns and adjectives, and person, tense, and number for verbs. And then finally, it's equivalent or descendant words in Middle English or present day English. So just by hovering over the yellow underlining, for example, from Thay to Wes to Bold, a novice reader can navigate the poem working word from word in the manuscript image 
without even having to open a translation. But of course, if you get stuck, you can always switch to the green glosses for full lines that will show you Feiwe's bold you build erthu iboren wera, for you a dwelling was built before you were born. Or you can open the edition or translation documents side by side within the digital grave. One of the benefits of this kind of glossing is that there can be multiple offered translations, in effect immediately accessible at the primary text. So looking at this word bold, it's very quick to see that it refers to a building, a house, or a dwelling. But it's also metaphorically a reference to a grave. And this metaphor was dead enough, as it were, that many translations of the grave, the poem, simply translate this line as, for you, a grave was built. I call this polyglossing, though, because it allows a novice reader to access both the semantic meaning of the line and the resonance between the noun bold and the past participle verb for you build right after it in the same line, so that you have this metaphorical motif of the built dwelling, the bold, both semantically and phonically resonating just in these first opening words. This is also quite valuable when we're looking at the Old English habit of using compound metaphors. For example, this down here, earthhus. It's not quite a kenning because it's a bit literal, but an earth house, earthhus, refers to a grave. It's fairly quick to figure out but translating earthhus simply as grave loses that dual meaning of both earth house and grave. And so having that motif of the grave being a dwelling comes through a lot more clearly if you have earthhus glossed as such in addition to being able to interpret it as grave. If you click on a yellow gloss, you can then click on a link to the glossary. For example, let's look at it with Ye Build. The glossary also links back to various instances of that word in the text. So you can hover over and see there's Ye Build, but also Ye Build. And this way you can compare spelling, hand, context, etc. And in some cases, as with this first instance of you build, there's also a link to the manuscript and textual notes or to the introduction, which gives a little bit more discussion of the prefix GE, you build, versus the prefix, just the letter I, you build, and how that is one of the ways in which this poem shows transition from Old English to Middle English. So how can the digital grave be used in teaching? It's a small text, but it can serve a variety of pedagogical purposes. I've included a couple of outlined activities under for teachers and students, but for example, this text can be used in a history of the English language class to demonstrate transitions from Old to Middle English, as we saw with that evolution of Yabild to Ibild. So with the help of glosses, manuscript notes, transcription, and translation, history of the English language students can focus on linguistic features of the text. For students studying British literature, though, in a survey course, for example, they might not have an emphasis on history of the language, but the text is still accessible using the translation and can serve as an illustration of manuscript culture, the multi-stage copying of texts, and the persis persistence of English language literature after the Norman conquest but before the revived popularity of English language literature with poets like Geoffrey Chaucer. Advanced students may be more focused on manuscripts as a part of book history, in which case details such as erasures and differences in scribal hands can be useful for practicing paleographic reading skills. One recommended exercise is to have students practice describing the ducts of the two hands that copy this poem and develop an argument for whether or not they could have belonged to the same scribe, perhaps at different points in their lifespan, or whether they are certainly from different scribes. 
And because this is a high resolution digital image, it's particularly accessible for zooming in and comparing particular letter forms such as this D and this D from Scrub 2. As a way of practicing paleographic reading skills and exercising argumentation for whether a particular letter form matches for student paleographers. So that's the digital grave. If you have any feedback or questions about this resource, you can tweet at me. I'm at Parker Chronicle. Enjoy.